Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. For this video, I want to start with the question, what do you think an AI unicorn is? And you should leave a comment below if you're taking this literally. What I want to talk about today is the monumental news of Stability AI becoming, in my opinion, the first true AI unicorn startup. It happened this week with Stability AI closing a $101 million round at a billion dollar valuation. And just so we can be official and clear, in business, a unicorn is a privately held startup company valued at over 1 billion US dollars. Granted, a billion dollars is worth a little bit less now compared to well, 2013. But uh, the term was first published in 2013, coined by venture capitalist Eileen Lee, choosing the mythical animal to represent the st statistical rarity of such a successful venture. And yeah, it is pretty rare. And I will say it's particularly rare in the case of Stability AI because they're in London. And for those of you who don't know or don't follow this because you're not as geeked out about startups as I am, in the UK and the EU in general, it's much less likely to end up with a billion dollar valuation or a startup that can even reach a liquidity event um, or an event where someone would be able to turn their equity, uh, which is what investors invest in. So the, the investors who have purchased 100 or given Stability AI $101 million, they have equity in this company now, and they hope at some point that they'll be able to turn that equity into some form of cash. So um, the big deal is now they're valued at a billion dollars. They're a unicorn. However, a lot of other things to cover here. This was led by three primary firms which is interesting. Uh, these are pretty highbrow firms. So Couture and Lightspeed Venture Partners, you'll hear those names quite commonly. O'Shaughnessy Ventures, uh, less so, but they're still a very impressive fund. What's interesting is uh, this isn't necessarily their official valuation. This is Bloomberg looking at whatever information is publicly available. And occasionally people will leak or will provide um, legal documentation in the US when you purchase shares in a private company that allow them to estimate that their value or their estimated value right now is around a billion dollars. They go in the talk about what they're working on. Uh, ironically, I mean, they mentioned Ahmad because he started all this and major hats off to Ahmad, even in the light of their recent uh, community scuffles. And what, what's interesting here is, you know, they, they mentioned European unicorns again, showing how uncommon this kind of a trend is. Uh, Bloomberg gets a little bit deeper in, okay, of course it's paywalled. They get into some sort of the announcements that Stability AI made this week at their event, which we have a little bit of video from, from another YouTuber. So I'll link to their video, uh, which is a full video of everything that was going on. And TechCrunch also raises some curious points. I think TechCrunch is the most technically competent uh, outlets that do startup coverage. Um, Bloomberg is pretty much for the layman. TechCrunch is for people who are a bit more at, at ground level. But yeah, so they say, you know, Stability AI, the company funding the development of open source music and image generating systems like Dance Diffusion and Stable Diffusion, today announced that it, that it raised $101 million in funding round by the VC firms we recently mentioned. The tranche values the company at $1 billion post money, according to Bloomberg. So that's saying if you took all their equity based on what people are paying for it now, worth a billion dollars. So they're based in London and San Francisco. They mentioned Ahmad again with, you know, strong roots in the UK, which is, again, very cool. What's cool here is they go into a bit more technical detail about kind of what their expenses are, really. So they, they're they saying Stability AI has a cluster of more than 4,000 NVIDIA A100 GPUs running in AWS. So they're, they're renting it, which he uses to train AI systems, including stable diffusion. It's quite costly to maintain. So what's interesting here, what they're really saying is that, yeah, they're worth a billion dollars, but their balance sheet is dominated by the fact that they're renting 4,000 GPUs from NVIDIA. And granted, in time, you know, it, it would be more expensive just to buy these outright. And it's an easier expense to justify on a balance sheet if you're just renting it from Amazon. Uh, and then worst case, you can just ask Amazon for more money. Um, what's also pretty interesting is running GPUs like this. A big part of this is just the power cost, power these and cool them. Because in a data center, GPUs by far make the most heat of any type of server you would find. And they're also much harder to achieve high density with. So if you're looking at square footage in a data center, the costliest square footage you can buy are GPU servers. And if you've ever tried to rent servers or rent server space or co-locate in Iraq, you know this. There's a reason why data centers charge per watt and it's not necessarily for power. It's a great way to quantify power use and heat since you can assume that most of what you're consuming is power will become heat. And it's 
pretty simple physics. So what's interesting is they get into a little bit of their future plans here. And stability has been rightfully so pretty vague about this. Um, but I think it's interesting because there's some people who make these very like lowbrow takes that are like, oh no, they're just going to try to do a dolly that they're going to try to license this to someone. They're going to, they're going to sell it to some company that's going to ruin all of this. And what I think TechCrunch gets right is they get the open and sort of the private uh, use sides of it saying that, you know, anyone can take this and do something on their personal machine. And they still don't really emphasize this enough because they don't really say Dolly is sort of lame and old and not really cool anymore compared to this. And the reason stable stability AI and stable diffusion is so cool is because they just let anyone use it. So you'd think that they'd talk more about that. TechCrunch is effectively written for venture capitalists and people who do this for business. So clearly they state a few exciting things. They state what the biggest looming problem could be, which is the cost of their, of their GPUs and their AWS bill, which, you know, most startups have a big AWS bill. It's the largest expense for most of them outside of people they're paying, which they surprisingly don't mention here. Um, and AI engineers are not cheap. To get to my point here, um, they say stability AI plans to make money by training private models for customers acting as a general infrastructure layer. ML ops to an extent a little bit more than what Lambda and Hugging Face claim to do in the cloud, which is kind of interesting. Now, it also offers a platform and API Dream Studio through which its models can be accessed by individual users, a UI. And it's interesting in this case how the monetization model for a lot of these, it's all how you're presenting it to a user. And oddly, I I still strongly believe that mid journey is way out in front, even in front of stability AI in this case, uh, because they understand how people use it. They understand how to keep people using it. And most importantly, they understand how to make people pay for it. So what's interesting to me is people are putting up their hands and saying, well, how how is anyone going to figure out how to monetize this? And time and time again, I just point to Midjourney and say, look, that you can pay $10, you can pay $30, even if they're still losing money on this, they found a way to get people to give them cash. And then they found a really compelling way to hook a ton of people on just like clicking through generating images for hours. I mean, I've done it. The, the other day I spent six hours on mid journey clicking through and yeah, I, I lost like a day doing that. So they say that they're going to have this general infrastructure layer, um, train private models. So basically selling support, right? Um, like it's the Red Hat model, Red Hat software, you know, they, they pioneered the idea of releasing free software and then selling support to enterprise customers that really need it. This is going to be a curious thing to see with AI. A stock told Bloomberg that Dream Studio has more than 1.5 million users who've created over 170 million images and Stable Diffusion has more than 10 million daily users. Um, this metric is clearly hard to measure, but I'm sure Hugging Face has a curious way of measuring that. Meanwhile, the open source version of Stable Diffusion has been downloaded more than 200,000 times. That, that seems low. According to a press release published by Stability AI this morning, according to Mostek, the capital from funding round will support deploying custom versions of Stable Diffusion for users at a larger scale, and investing more in super. So, all right, so buying more GPUs and specializing a bit in sort of a, a bespoke market. Okay, and they're going to triple the headcount. That's interesting. And you know, a curious thing to mention here is that in the current sort of economic downturn, people think this is horrible, and it is. But uh, it's really horrible for Fang companies. Companies like Google, Microsoft, Netflix, but it's really good for startups because it means talent that's been let go from these big companies or that may be looking elsewhere because their huge equity packages are now worth much less. I mean, for those who don't know, if you work for Google, you make a ton of money, but usually in time for the highest earners or the mid to highest earners, most of your comp is, if not two thirds of your comp is in stock. So if you work at Facebook for a awful example. Say two thirds of your comp is in stock and now that's worth 60% less, you're going to look elsewhere. This means that the talent pool that Stability AI can pull from is significantly better. So exciting, you know, oddly a good time for them to scale. They're not competing with huge salaries as much. And I'm probably going to make a dedicated video on this. But what's interesting is uh, this company called Jasper AI, which effectively is the biggest Canva or Figma competitor that uses AI. They've initially made a lot of news because they bought a bunch of AI models, specifically language models. Um, they, their first thing is like, you can automate a blog with our platform. We'll, we'll do copywriting, we'll do titles, we'll do image content. And they bought a bunch of models from med students who were doing AI in their free time, which is kind of interesting. And I would argue this is potentially another AI unicorn more so than I would say uh, Dolly or some of the more corporate tools are because they raised a round that was 
that was bigger. So they, they raised a, a $125 million Series A. I think Foundation Capital has a great write-up. Granted, they invested, so clearly they're going to be juicing some of the information here. But yeah, they make some claims here saying oh, this is the fastest AI company to reach 100 million. Not a unicorn yet, but curiously raising more money than stability AI. And of course, there are going to be people in the, in the comments that are saying, what are you talking about? The company is only worth a hundred million, maybe a little bit more. They've raised more money, but you know, maybe the founders are just idiots and they're giving up more equity. Smart people make these mistakes commonly. And, and you know, in closing, my favorite part of this entire deck, which is basically, for the lack of a better term, a, a venture capitalist who's probably not very technical, getting all excited, uh, is this hilarious, which, which you know, they, maybe, they, hopefully they had an intern make this, but this is a breakdown of where they see the business future of AI going. And we've made a few videos on how to monetize some of this stuff or where we thought some of the direction of this stuff would go. And this is, I, I, did, I kind of just started laughing when I, when I read this. So they consider Jasper like a, a copywriting and advertising tool, you know, as if this was hard enough to not just hire someone to do anyway. So sales, SDR automation and coaching. My favorite thing here is they only consider mid journey as an asset creation tool. They miss the entire infrastructure layer with training so they have Lambda, Hugging Face, and Replicate here. Coding. So, so VC firms are not technical. Other than the partners, a lot of people who work at these firms, are they're, they're paid well, but they're just not very sharp. I, I hate to kind of say it, but that's really, in my experience doing startup stuff, generally pretty true. And yeah, so the funny thing is it, I, I am jovially uh, not surprised to find that VC is just, they're, they're licking their fingers and they are giddy with AI, what this means, and, and they could not be more clueless. So for those of you who are not even technically well-versed, or maybe you didn't go to, uh, you didn't study engineering in college, you didn't study software stuff, you likely know more and have a greater depth of knowledge on a lot of these tools and the direction a lot of this stuff than venture capital firms leading $100 million funding rounds. So... Keep that in mind. You guys are killing it. As always, I hope you learned something. Drop us a comment if you want us to change something. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.